Ryan Cole, uh, for a long time, we didn't know if we were going to have a cross-country season, but here it is. Uh, this coming Monday, you have meet number one. Uh, just take me through this a little bit. How, is the team excited to actually have a season? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's been a long time coming. Uh, we, you know, we had an indoor track meet here last weekend, and after a 10-month absence, it was, it was just great to, to see people out there competing, the uniform on. Uh, so th there was a lot of excitement, uh, but even the group being back together again, coming off winter break and, uh, you know, still being able to operate within our COVID protocols, but have the group back together training, you could see a lot of excitement there too. So yeah, they're, they're really looking forward to having competitions, um, particularly after the fall where, you, you know, there was always a glimmer of hope, but uh, it, it was, it was kind of tough. So yeah, there, there's definitely a lot of excitement to go and compete. And without having, there will be no indoor championships this year, yeah. but there will be cross country championships. But wow, what an abbreviated season. You're going to have this meet, then the conference championships. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So it's, uh, and, and there will be national championships indoors. So it's really just the, the conference championships uh, where we will have a cross country conference meet on March 5. Um, and, and then right after that is going to be the indoor national championships. And then two days after that, the cross country national championships. So I, I've told our group, you know, if we're doing a whole lot of racing at the beginning and middle of March, it's not a bad thing. You know, it means we're doing pretty well. Uh, but yeah, I, I think, you know, with distance running in particular, uh, there are going to be a few individuals that may uh, have pretty good range as far as being able to drop down from the cross country distance and still be really competitive in the more mid distance type of races on the track. But overall, there's a lot of overlap. Like if you're trying to just become a better runner, um, many of the training structures are the same. And, and so, you know, there might be one weekend where somebody runs a 5K inside and then two weeks later they're, they're running um, a, a cross country race. And so we'll, we'll be able to balance that pretty well. A few people did have to kind of prioritize. And then once the announcement was made on the, the Mountain West indoor championships being canceled, uh, that made the decision a little bit easier how to approach uh, the, the championship season uh, for certain people on the team. So we're, we're excited to get into it. Yeah, seeing as how it, you're, you're kind of dual sports, supposedly, because track and field cross country are different. But mm -hmm. once you get down to this race come Monday, mm -hmm. it's cross country. So yeah. how, do you, how do your athletes focus on that? Because it, it is... It's not running around a track. It's running out in the outdoors, and it's a lot longer. So how do you change your mentality, I guess? Uh, I hope they don't have to change it a whole lot. I hope it's always just about competing. And, you know, sometimes you're out there competing a little bit longer, and that may, may change how you approach the event. Uh, but as far as what they're focused on, I hope it's always on preparing to compete successfully. And so really that, that doesn't change a whole lot. Um, and, you know, if we're able to kind of continue to focus on competing, which we haven't been able to do in a while. So I, I hope that, you know, there's a lot of excitement and that's a pretty smooth process to, to be excited about a competition coming up. Uh, but if we focus on competing really well and if we've taken care of our preparations and, you know, you only have so many semesters as an undergrad in college um, to continue to develop and improve yourself as an athlete and as a distance runner. So uh, I think regardless of the season, you always want to be taking steps forward. And if we're able to do that and, and compete well, you know, I think, I think we can be pretty good. You got two teams, the men and the women. The women, remarkable season last year. The men probably felt like they wanted to have another go at it. Do you feel, speak to both your men's and women's teams? Yeah, I mean, we're going to find out a little bit more on Monday. Uh, but, you know, I think when you look back at, at your, your past experiences, you always want to take something positive away from that. And so, uh, yeah, the women had a great season last year, uh, but there were also challenges last year that they had to navigate. And, you know, last year's done. And so hopefully there's something that we, we learned from that that's going to help us be better this year, but we're also going to have challenges this year. And, uh, you know, you can't live in the past or you're probably not going to be very good in the present, you know. So, so that's done, and, and we're looking ahead at this season and, and just focusing on being the best team that we're, we're capable of being with the variables that we have, um, you know, within our program right now. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, the, the men's team, yeah, last year they, they felt like they could have been a little bit better uh, watching this past fall and this winter so far. Um, you know, that's why you run the race, but I'm very intrigued uh, to see how it goes. And I know there are a lot of very motivated guys and we're, that's pretty neat. Yeah, we're intrigued, too, to see how this whole cross-country season plays out. But, Rankle, thanks for the time. Good luck this week. Absolutely. Thank you.